Hi, Beth. Hi, how are you? I, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Listen, before we get started with the interview, uh, many news reports have said that uh, Aruban authorities would be announcing today if there was going to be a rearrest of Joran van der Sloot. Have you heard anything? No, I have not heard anything as of yet. Yeah, I, I've been checking my sources and contacts, and I haven't heard anything either, but hopefully we'll have some good news. All right, let's set that aside. Uh, I'm going to be speaking to Peter R. DeVries this evening. Peter R. DeVries must hold a special place in your heart. Tell us about that. Oh, absolutely. Well, I, I think that um, we all would um, have to hail Peter DeVries as the king, and I'm sure he does not like to refer to that at all. No. Um, but I just can't help it. He's just, uh, it's, you know, I think we can all say he was heroic and that he stepped forward and, you know, in order to um, bring light on to what happened and to uh, all the circumstances surrounding Natalie's disappearance. And, you know, I feel as if I cannot say thank you to Peter DeVries without also Patrick, you know, the yes. uh, this young man that, you know, who's just a father and uh, wanted to see the right thing done, who stepped forward to um, to also partner with Peter DeVries and make this all possible. So absolutely heroic for both of them. Peter DeVries and his team have done a, a stand-up job uh, better than the law enforcement have ever done. Uh, hopefully this will result in, in some... Uh, court appearances and some convictions. Time will tell. But, you know, Beth, I've interviewed you several times on the program, and we've talked about answers. Answers are something that you've been looking for. Obviously, you're also looking for your daughter, and we all hope and pray that you'll be able to bring her home soon. But did you receive the answers that you were looking for by watching that undercover tape? Well, absolutely I did, and I think I have to even back it up to what you said when you when you um, were opening the um, your show, and then it is justice does come in many different forms. Just as I've learned, it's in many different forms. And for me, justice came as it's just an answer. And yes, I did receive the answer. And uh, secondly, you know, I think I felt some justice and just validation of the fight, and uh, meaning that you know every step that we took was well worth it. And uh, and of course, the third form of justice I would love to see, and I think everyone else would, is to see uh, Ron Vander Sloat behind bars. And yes. I do feel strongly that uh, he is a time bomb, and he's waiting to go off, and he will strike again. And so it's not just for Natalie that I would like to see him behind bars, as I think that he could certainly strike again, and I think he will strike again. I think that he was only building... Um, in his behaviors and recklessness, and um, and I think he's shown us all he has no control over himself or his actions. C countries, islands, uh, cities, towns, whatever, uh, the, their uh, leaders take a vow, they swear an oath that they protect their citizenry. They protect their citizenry, they protect their uh, visitors. Aruba obviously failed in the situation. Crime does happen, we all understand that. But it's the goal and the responsibility of, uh, of organizations, uh, countries, law enforcement, you name it, to conduct a proper investigation. Uh, now that this has gone to this extreme, and I know you've been somewhat reluctant in the past to talk about it because you were concentrating on finding your daughter, and we all understand that. But when I've interviewed Jug and Dave and others, and, and we've talked about uh, situations where the strange questions that you were asked when you first arrived on the island, uh, Jug and I spoke about that here back in December, and now it's become pretty obvious that there has to be more to the story than what we're hearing, that some would say that there's corruption and cover-up right from the beginning. I know that's not going to help bring Joran van der Sloot to justice and put him behind bars, and maybe it's something that needs to be dealt with later, but I'm curious, Beth, on your take on now compared to three, four months ago. Well, you're exactly right. There are two different tracks, and one is to stay focused on Joran and his admissions and what the investigators and prosecution can now do with him, but I think the second thing that we face eventually is we need to get to the bottom of exactly what was transpiring in the first 48 hours of Natalie's disappearance and um, you know to set aside you're on we have to look at um, you know, we had some stunning revelations that were being uh, admitted from Iran as he was describing them couldn't help but take us back to the very beginning 
The first 48 hours of her disappearance were a lead detective ask us only one medical question and it was does Natalie have a history of epilepsy seizures and the answer of course was no and we didn't know why that question kept resurfacing during the months of Natalie's disappearance but I think that our stunning revelation was when Yaron admitted that to Patrick it, yes. it is very suspicious and it's certainly a red flag that, that uh, needs to be delved into there is a reason why this was asked of us and we need to get to the bottom to find out why so I think there are two different tracks but the one I really want to stay focused on right now is Jerron and his admissions and uh, start delving into what happened in the first 48 hours that's just going to be a whole separate whole separate ball game I agree with you completely and it's something that uh, we'll stay focused